Hi, and welcome to Liquid Motion. My name is Guy Chomet, and today I will stay away from CineWigs and instead talk about the use of action camera underwater. What would be a good setup? What housing to get? Setting for achieving cinematic footage? The use of filter, lights, and also to find a use for the professional underwater filmmaker. When saying action camera, a lot of people think about the GoPros. While the GoPros get the best marketing, I don't think they have the best action camera, especially not if you want to use it underwater. DJI have a tremendous experience in small cameras that they have on their drones. So I did use the Osmo Action Underwater. Let's start by talking about housings. Even though the action camera waterproof to a few meters, they cannot get to scuba diving depth. So you need a housing. Action camera housing are often made of acrylic, which is a bummer because the acrylic has a very poor heat conduction. So action camera, and especially the GoPro, are generating substantial heat. And as the heat is accumulating in the acrylic housing, condensation start forming on the inside of the housing, ruining the shot. To avoid this, I spent more money and got an aluminum housing. No more condensation, no more using the thickened pipes. This housing comes with a magnetic filter holder as option, which is a great accessory that will help tremendously to achieve cinematic footage. So let's look at how to make cinematic footage with an action camera. First, you have to remember that to have the right motion blur that will match the motion blur we are using in movies, we need to multiply the frame rate by two to get the denominator of the shutter speed. I am shooting at 25 frames per second, which means that my shutter speed should be a 50th of a second. If you are in the US, you will be using either 30 frames or 24 frames per second, and I would recommend using 24 frames per second, so that would make a 60th of a second for 30 frames and 48th of a second for 24 frames per second. If you cannot get the 48th of a second, then a 50 is close enough. So you set your camera on full manual mode and select the proper shutter speed in relation with your frame rate. Okay, so we have the shutter speed set and we cannot change it. The iris has a static aperture fixed at f2.8, so that is not changing either. So the only way to control the exposure is by changing the ISO. So on my action cam, I can program some custom settings that I can switch underwater using the quick selection button tool on the side. So I am going to set three custom settings, one at 100 ISO, then one at 200 ISO, and the last one at 400 ISO. I am never using higher ISO to maintain the best image quality. But when diving in sunny tropical location, the light can be too bright, even for the lowest ISO of 100. Remember, we have a 50th of a second and f2.8. So that is when a filter holder become a necessity. So we can use some ND filter to control the light and stay within the parameter for cinematic footage. I carry various strength of ND filter so I can change them underwater to give me a bigger range of operation. I also carry a diopter to reduce the minimum focusing distance when shooting super close to a subject. So my holder is taking 67 mm threaded filter, so I just buy some standard ND filter set, et voila. And don't forget to get one of these, as underwater, it can get tricky to remove the filters. 
or and do not try the variable ND filter, uh, they have a, a, a double glass element that move relative to each other, and the water will get in there and mess it up. So single glass filter only. What you can do is you can stack them once under water if you need to. And I recommend you unstack them while you're under water. It will be easier. Now comes the most important part of all, the lighting. People can get an action cam for around $400 and have a very tiny package. Often people think that they should match the light to the camera in terms of size and cost. And this is the most common error people do. The light requirement under water will be the same for a cine camera kit worth 100K and an action camera worth 400. In fact, I would say that the lighting is even more important with the action cam than it is with the red monstrous, simply because a lot more can be done in post with the cine footage than with the action camera. So get a bright light. Having two lights is better than a single one, so you can open the shadow and be more creative in your lighting. I personally use 18,000 lumen lights with 95% of my shot using a science filter on my light to bring their temperature of color up. This is giving me much better results. Now, sometimes people would wonder, why would I even consider making some footage with an action cam? I have access to much larger camera with larger sensor, a bigger dynamic range, better lenses. So the unique feature that make an action cam attractive to me is its small size. That is it. Unique advantage that allows some formidable angle otherwise impossible to achieve with a bulky kit. With a small size also comes a higher maneuverability to get some unique point of view and perspective. You can get the camera through holes too small to carry a diver, making a creative shot that will look good. So what is going to get a clip on this tiny cam as good to watch as clips from that huge cam here? This will obviously be the content. So get super close to your subject. Work your lighting properly. Get great content that people with large camera cannot shoot. And if your budget is tight, these little action camera are a way to start making film underwater until you get the budget to get a better and bigger kit. So to summarize, get an action cam like the DJI Action 3. Get an aluminum housing with a filter holder. Get a plus 10 diopter and a standard set of 67 ND filter. Set the cam for cinematic footage. Shutter twice the same rate, remember? Use a diopter when shooting close up. Super important. Use some adequate lighting. And that's it for today. Let me know in the comment if you want to know more about shooting with an action camera underwater and get some quality shots that look cinematic. If you like the video, don't forget to subscribe and click the thumb up. It will help us create some more video that will hopefully improve your underwater filmmaking or photography. If you have already subscribed, click notification and I will see you in the next video. And cut!